Videos like these are made possible by viewers like you, who support the channel through Patreon, channel memberships, and stream donations. And don't forget to check out the Bad Weapon Rehabilitation servers at www.badweaponrehab.tf. Check the links in the description for more information, and let's get into the video. In TF2, Spy is easily one of the classes that I am the worst at. But maybe I can fix this problem by simply playing Spy in some other game and seeing if I have an easier time. So let's find out. Can I beat Fallout New Vegas as the Spy from Team Fortress 2? I wanted this to be a unique challenge where I tried to build a character as close to the original as possible. For the Spy, this means I will be limited to very specific weapons analogous to those the Spy uses in TF2. For guns, I am only allowed to use revolvers, and for melee weapons, I am only allowed to use knives. And I'll also be allowed to use the pulse weapons against robots as my sapper. I'll end up using almost all of the different revolver types, but the only knives that matter are Chance's knife and the switchblade for reasons we'll get into in a second. Being the spy, I must also not only have canonical sex with a woman in order to birth the scout into this world and leave it worse off for it, but I must also take full advantage of the ability to disguise myself as the member of an enemy faction. But when I'm not disguised, I'm gonna want a suit. Nope. Nah. -uh. Not quite. Getting closer. Oh yeah, now we're talking. That means President Kimball is going to have to die. And more importantly, I'm gonna have to be the one to kill him. Now why is that? Wouldn't it be easier to just do nothing and let the Legion Assassins kill him? Well, yes, but there's another twist to this challenge. A somewhat forgotten facet of New Vegas are the Gunrunner's Arsenal challenges. These require you to do some pretty specific actions, often against specific characters. I have decided that every single one of these challenges that involves a weapon that I am allowed to use must be completed before I finish the game in order to truly prove my mastery of the spy class. Therefore, I have to kill 10 named Legion members with a hunting revolver or ranger sequoia, kill 15 robots with a 5.56 pistol, kill 5 Legion or NCR assassins with any combat knife or revolver, kill Caesar with a knife or combat knife, kill President Kimball with any of the revolvers, kill 15 super mutants with a 5.56 pistol, kill 20 raiders with a 44 magnum revolver, and the worst one of all, I need to kill 5 adult death claws with a switchblade, one of the weakest melee weapons in the game. And once you see my special stats, you're gonna see that this is a real pain in the ass. First of all, low strength. For melee, this kinda sucks since it impacts my damage, but in TF2, the spy has the second lowest base melee damage in the game with his butter knives, so there's no getting around this. Endurance is also likewise incredibly low. Spy is tied for the lowest health pool in TF2, so I go for two endurance. In a word, this is bad. And considering I'm going to be wearing civilian clothes for most of my encounters, this makes stealth not only in character, but a necessity, and will make dealing with those death claws and legion assassins a lot harder. Especially because I'm going to be playing on hard difficulty. Everything else I put as good to decent, including charisma, which I put up to 8 with the spy being a suave, charming ladies' man. Luck, I couldn't decide where to land. Since spy is so defined by luck, both good and bad, that I just went in the middle and gave him 5 luck. For my tag skills, I took Sneak, Melee, and Lockpick. Lockpick is it's not only the kind of shifty, skullduggerous thing that I would expect of the spy, but having high lockpick early on is going to be important for reasons that you'll soon see. Finally, for my traits, I picked Skilled, as spy is a class that certainly requires a great deal of skill, and also Small Frame, as he is made of wet cardboard as it stands, and I need to feel pain at every opportunity. And now, with all that preamble out of the way, we're ready to begin. I drop everything that isn't usable to me, which is everything. Luckily, Good Spring starts me off with two weapons that I can already use. A knife in Doc Mitchell's house, and a 357 Magnum revolver that I can steal from inside the Prospector Saloon. This allows me to go through the tutorial with Sunny, save this levitating woman, and get some easy experience in caps. Also, for any future runs I may do of this, I won't be allowing myself to use any of the starting DLC items even if there is something my character would be allowed to use, because it's more challenging that way. Luckily, the spy didn't have that problem to begin with. Once the tutorial is done, 
I try to get a backstab kill against Joe Cobb, but fail miserably because the knife is garbage. I do manage to kill him, but my wild swings end up angering the fellow good Springsians who kill me in retaliation. This will be the first of many deaths. After several more tries, I use my superior powers of sneakery to wait for him to leave and kill him outside, giving me my first faction disguise and stealth boy, allowing me to use my cloak and leveling up where I boost my lockpick and officially become a lady killer. Realizing that I'm going to need some heavier knife power, I do the classic New Vegas strategy of rushing Chance's knife. I've never done this before, so I run into some complications, but through the power of hugging the wall, I manage to stay out of the Cazador's range long enough to kill them, grab the knife from the grave, as well as a great con uniform for when I deal with them, and run back to Good Springs with my pants soaked with piss. Now I really need a new suit. Ringo decides to sleep through the coming Powder Gangers invasion, and I try to use Joe Cobb's old suit to fool the Powder Gangers, which does not go well. Not only do they see right through my disguise, but even if I win the fight, the only people I end up fooling are the Good Springsians. I now regret not stabbing them in the back. Once the deed is done, I make up for this by stabbing Ringo in the back as soon as he isn't looking. That's what you get for sleeping through your own fight. I also stab Malcolm Holmes in the back, mostly just because I feel like it. On the way to Prim, I test out my backstabbing against Barton Thorne, fail miserably, and test out my disguising against some powder gangers, also failing miserably. It's good to see that my skills from Spy and TF2 transfer over to New Vegas so well. Luckily, I managed to backstab this NCR soldier, allowing me to take his armor for an easy disguise. This will come in handy when I inevitably piss them off by doing something stupid later on. I then decide that I like this guy's armor better as it helps to cover up my face, and so he must also die for it. Clearing out the escaped convicts in town will require stealth, because even these low-level goobers still really hurt with my garbage endurance. Using my superior stealth, I also come across a gun that will aid me in all of my future travels. Lucky. A straight upgrade to the 357 Magnum I have that makes me really regret spending all that money upgrading it when this was right here. Taking the shortcut route requiring a lockpick, I take out the convicts, including their flamethrower toting leader, who has something I want. A balaclava from a mod I installed. Now I can truly become the spy. Or maybe a KKK member. Once they're all cleared out, I decide to use my Powder Ganger disguise to infiltrate their headquarters so that I can recruit Sheriff Myers. One of their Watchtower snipers doesn't seem to like me very much though. They also don't like me inside. It's clear that my disguises could use some work. I later try to get a backstab on someone who instantly spots me and opens fire before I get the chance to do anything. The more things change, the more they stay the same. After uppercutting some ants to death, I make my way to Nipton get some backstabs on these dorks, and realize all too late that I'm still disguised as an NCR soldier as I approach Wolpez and his goons. So far, my disguises are working more to my detriment than my favor. I repay them for this by killing everyone except Wolpez, who I let live so that he may tell tales of my deeds, as he has charged into me to do for his own. Also, I'd like to keep him alive so I can kill him with a ranger sequoia for my challenge later. Arriving at the Mojave Outpost, not only do I pardon Myers, but I turn in all the quests in the area. I'll need to build up my NCR reputation if I want my chance at Kimball's suit, after all. I send some scorpions flying, send some ants to hell, and send Myers on his way with a smile on his face and a license to kill as I continue on my journey. I stumble upon a cave filled with raiders and am almost immediately torn to shreds by their submachine guns. It's fortunate that with a set of weapons like this and stats like these, my character revolves around sneak, as it's the only way I'm able to survive encounters like these. Roleplay isn't just for fun, it's a matter of life and death. Against this green heavy weapons guy though, my stealth isn't going to help me. Deciding to let Shrek and myself live another day gives me the needed experience to level up and get the professional perk. This perk was made for this build. On the way to Novak, I try to redeem myself as an infiltrator, backstabbing the Legion Slaver so that I can free the Powder Ganger slaves. It takes a few attempts, but soon I'm able to leave the camp empty save for a few Legion corpses, completing the booted quest. The trip to Novak is mostly uneventful, Though for some reason I attempt to clear out this cave full of Night Stalkers for at least 10 minutes before my rational brain kicks in and causes me to give up and never return. Leave it to a spy player to punch above their weight class. So instead of taking on the Night Stalkers or the nearby Cave of Death Claws, I decide to get jump scared by a mole rat. <laughs> Once I do arrive in Novak though, I immediately go to grab that gun which will be one of my more powerful weapons and instrumental in many of my challenges. The first of which I'll be putting some serious work into is Vault 13's Revenge, 
as I'll be using that gun to slaughter all of the Nightkin in the Repcon basement and take all of their stealth boys for maximum spy cloaking. And I'm going to need every single one. The rest of Come Fly With Me goes as you'd expect. I get killed by Gecko, seduce an old lady, and by the end of it, send everyone to the moon and become a cowboy. Couldn't be simpler. Also for the experience in the street cred, I have Boone kill Jeannie Mae, but I also have to take off my broken balaclava to do so, and I can't have it repaired without having another one. I must go maskless for the time being. My NCR disguise doesn't even let me get into Helios 1 without issue, which, yeah, so much for that. I still want the street cred though, because those points I need to put into guns to properly use the Ranger Sequoia aren't going to obtain themselves, so I decide to do that lucky old son, using the only pulse weapons I ever use in the entire playthrough, to sap the robots inside Helios 1. Enraged at the NCR for not letting me inside their solar clubhouse even though I wore their special uniform, I make an example out of Private Kowalski, letting him die with his little bitch brother in his heart and my knife in his back. I then use the great cons disguise I got from Chance's grave and Chance's knife I got from Chance's grave to sneak up on and slaughter the great cons in Boulder City. On my way to Vegas, I take the time to shoot up some robots at the Repcon headquarters with that gun bringing me closer to finishing my first challenge. The sentry bots inside give me some trouble, but with enough sneak attack criticals, I'm able to complete my first GRA challenge. One down, seven to go. Since I'm on a high, I go to the New Vegas Clinic and get myself a luck implant, bringing my luck up to six so I can now get the better criticals perk. With an endurance of two, I'll only be able to get one more implant later on, but this one was worth it, as you'll soon see. In Freeside, I kill one of the kings to get a king's outfit to wear around town, but without the haircut, I simply don't sell the look. Oh well. After going to the strip and talking to House, I realize that I'm in need of a higher barter if I want to get the mysterious Magnum, and wanting to increase my NCR reputation anyway, all for that suit, baby, I make my way towards Camp Forlorn Hope, which has one quest in particular that I want. Return to Sender, will give me early access to Chief Hanlon's Ranger Sequoia revolver, and I need this gun. So I have my sights set on two guns now, because if these legionaries who ambush me are anything to go by, I'm a bit outmatched when it comes to non-stealth situations. So I do some NCR busy work, eyes on the prize the entire time, as I cut people's limbs off and deliver their supplies and travel from station to station all across the wasteland. In the meantime, I pick up a regular 44 Magnum and use it to shoot some raiders and take some pot shots at Death Claws to see if I can get them in Switchblade kill range yet. I certainly give it my best. Soon enough though, I'm left with one last objective and that's to deal with Chief Hanlon, and when I do, I swipe his Ranger Sequoia and beat a hasty and sneaky retreat. With this weapon in hand, it's time to tackle one of the harder challenges. With only so many named legionaries in the game, I decide my first stop will be Nelson. I disguise as a legion member, backstab everyone that doesn't matter, and get ready to take out Dead Sea. At least I say that, but then this guy spots me and takes me straight to the man himself. So, uh, thanks for the easy kill, I guess. One down, nine to go. Freeing the crucified soldiers also gives me a bit of NCR rep to work towards that beautiful suit, so hey, bonus. Some vipers not too far away are dealt with by the 44 Magnum, inching me closer to that challenge. And then after I take a nap, some Legion dudes show up and I kill them in their sleep for fun. I'm not even sure if the spy would be this against a Legion, but considering how many of my challenges involve killing Legionaries, I guess he must really hate these fuckers, so yeah, say goodnight. My next order of business is to get a new balaclava because I'm sick of my face being naked. I sneak into the NCRCF under the guise of Joe Cobb's bloodstained armor, this guy doesn't care, and he gets a knife in the back for it. It's nothing personal, I just want your ski mask. Making my way through, I'm eventually recognized as an imposter, I don't know how. Everyone died except me, that's all that matters. I then fast travel back to Forlorn Hope to turn in a quest and- Over here. Right, powder ganger armor. That's what you get for making me waste one of my stealth boys. Anyway, it's time to head back to the strip and take care of Benny. I convince Swank to leave him alone for a sneak attack. My specialty. Hey. Huh, could've been sneakier, I guess. Oh well, at least I have a real suit now. But it's not enough. I decided to help these handsomely suited chaps find some talent now that my barter is high enough to get the mysterious Magnum. And I also blow Woolpace's face off as soon as I see him outside. I'll only come to regret this if I die. Alright, three talents down, just a lonesome drifter to go and- The Kaisar has marked you for death, and the Legion obeys. Ah. Ready yourself for battle. Good thing this is all going according to my plan. 
I need the Legion Assassins on me so I can kill them with weapons affected by the Cowboy Perk, which is all of my weapons. Now I just need to do that without dying to them. Twice. Anyways, I have a chat with this man about being left behind by his father. Something the spy has no experience in whatsoever. Yet. I do still need to have sex with a woman after all. And after a bit of a shakedown, he gives me the Mysterious Magnum. With this, I have every weapon I will ever need. I make sure to touch some grass and turn in my quest for the tops. I then go to Sloan, as I need to mark it off anyway if I'm going to be killing Deathclaws, and I'm heading to the nearby Black Mountain to kill the remaining super mutants for Vault 13's revenge. But on the way, I run into something rather peculiar. Where the fuck is that there? Why the fuck is that there? What the fuck? is this. He is completely stuck unless I nudge him in such a way that moves him, freeing him from his stony prison. This is so bizarre, but also very useful. He can't attack me, but I can whittle him down as much as I want right into Switchblade range. I didn't know if the Alpha Deathclaws counted towards Deathclaw Pro Hunter, and it turns out they do. But this still took several attempts, and I came to realize that I would need to start dumping way more points into unarmed or piercing strikes soon. In any case, thank you Todd Howard for letting me get this first kill easily. I begin to make my way up Black Mountain, taking down super mutants with that gun just as I planned. And suddenly, my frame rate begins to die. Not just drop, die. The game became unplayable. Not just here, not just on this save, my entire game suddenly slowed to 1 FPS at best. I thought I wasn't going to be able to make this video. Or if I did, it would end here and I'd have to say that I couldn't beat Fallout New Vegas as the spy because God himself intervened and stopped me. But after messing around with enough game settings for a few hours, I managed to fix it. But I chose to avoid Black Mountain with three mutants left to kill. Luckily, I knew exactly where I could find those three mutants, but that would have to wait. Right now, it's time to deal with the Legion. For once, my disguise doesn't fail me at Cottonwood Cove, and I'm able to get plenty of backstabs on nameless Legion goons and make my way to the fort. Unfortunately, despite my high sneak, you can't use the Ranger Sequoia as a holdout weapon, meaning this is going to get ugly very fast. I try to sneak it out of the box undetected. Nope, they have ESP. All right then, the only option is to go guns blazing. Gun spy time. Okay, wow, that was bad. All right then, the only option is to backstab all the goons, then go guns blazing. Okay, that went better. Until it didn't. We'll improvise. Okay, backstab literally everyone who isn't a named legionary in the entire area, then go guns blazing. Much better. Inside Caesar's tent, his guards actually recognize when something dies right next to them, making them very dangerous adversaries. But leading them outside of the tent makes them easier to deal with, especially when they don't bother to attack me. I blow off Lucius's head real quick, and then it's time for my one-on-one -on -one battle with Caesar. I need to kill him with my knife, as per the challenge rules, and without piercing strikes, it's a decently lengthy fight, but one I come out on top of. I make it back to Cottonwood Cove, kill Aurelius with a sneak attack, and that only leaves Severus and Canyon Runner who I similarly blow away. That leaves me with only one named legionary, ow, my, I bit my tongue. That leaves me with only one named legionary left to kill, but I think I know just who will do the job. In any case, it's time for us to have the sex, and I can think of no one better to carry my seed than Red Lucy. You will bear a strong offspring. If I'm going to be killing Death Claws with a toothpick anyway, I may as well get laid for it. On the way to Vault 22 to get the Mantis Eggs for her, I blow away some fiends with my 44 Magnum, before realizing one of them is Cook Cook, and being a spy, I fucking hate Pyros and run for my life while peppering him full of shots, eventually bringing him down. And just a few short minutes later, I get my 20th kill on a Raider with my Magnum, completing the White Line Nightmare Challenge. That's three down now. I get the Mantis eggs for Scout's mom, move on to Good Springs to get the Rat Scorpion eggs, get those without a fuss, turn them in, and now it's time for the Pyro Gecko eggs. Oh son of a bitch. It takes a few tries, but I manage to bring down the Legion Assassins hunting me and check off yet another challenge. The eggs are thankfully easy enough to obtain, 
This is the only time I've had an easy time against Pyros as a spy. It'll certainly be easier than what's coming up, as I now have to redeem myself for failing to take out that cave of Night Stalkers earlier by getting Night Stalker eggs. But with the power of Ranger Sequoia Hollow Point rounds, I put the dogs down and am now tasked with Cazador eggs. The journey to get them is pretty rough, but that's what happens when you fight a horde of giant wasps wearing nothing but a suit. Not even the best suit. But a good enough suit to clear out the Cazadors and get to level 20, where I get the weapons handling perk, which, with another quick trip to the New Vegas Clinic for a strength implant, allows me to use all of my weapons at full efficiency. With the Cazador eggs obtained, the only target left is Deathclaw eggs. Now that I have Piercing Strike, getting a kill with a Switchblade will be much easier. And it is, though it takes a lot of drugs. But with that, I'm able to get a Switchblade kill on my first try. Although the second one does turn me into a funny ragdoll. More change, more stay same. And crippling this one's leg allows me to get a much easier kill on him, leaving only two to go. A few choice shots turn this one into a balloon animal ready to pop. And while it's a bit touch and go with this last one, his death allows me to level up my strange big earner and complete easily the hardest challenge of this run. Now, it's just the Super Mutants and President Kimball. But first, I take care of the remaining death claws in Quarry Junction, making extreme use of my better criticals to one-shot them with the Ranger Sequoia, and I'm thankful that the female death claw is just as prone to getting stuck as her alpha male counterpart. With that, I get the eggs, and I finally get the segs, and the shotgun that I can't even use. I then make my way up to Jacobstown, turning some Night Stalkers into funny ragdolls to see what's going on with them, only to discover that they're trying their hand at playing Spy 2. I'm better. These friendly Nightkins show up and I am extremely hospitable to them, which they appreciate so much that they let me complete my second to last challenge. You may be wondering what faction I've decided to go with. My impending assassination of President Kimball means the NCR is a no-go, and, well, there's not much left of the Legion at this point, and ultimately, I've decided to side with Yes Man. Not for any particular gameplay benefit, in fact, I'm approaching this roughly the same as I would if I sided with House. I just think that the spy would be betrayed by the fact that House looks like he's wearing a fancy suit in his computer screen, when really he's wearing this weird catheter diaper thing. With House out of the way, I bring in Yes Man and begin my work with the factions. I complete the Omerta side quest with my superior powers of stealth and assassinery. I don't kill them all, as they are wearing nice suits, which I can appreciate but not enough to want to kill them just to wear the suits. Not like some people. This just leaves the White Gloves, the Great Cons, the Boomers, and the Brotherhood of Steel. The White Gloves are very sharply dressed. Perhaps too sharply. Further investigation is required, and with my powers of subterfuge and investigation, I discover the sinister plans and drug everyone. That's what you get for trying to silly the good name of fashion with your cannibalism. I will be keeping the suit though, it is nice. Despite my bad relationship with the Great Cons after the whole mass murder thing, I'm able to use their outfit to sneak in, and then I backstab everyone and murder them all in their sleep. They are scourges and ruffians, and frankly they smell like pee and it reminds me too much of the sniper, so away they go. All that leaves is the boomers, and god, getting through their bombardment was such a pain in the ass. Partly because I was wearing just a suit for protection, and partly because they saw right through my stealth boy and I just killed them all too. And I also created a dramatic reenactment of an American school. I was very tired and didn't feel like doing all the boomer shit with the plane and everything. So yeah, they're all dead. Not that they made genocide easy for me either. I am made of paper after all. On the bright side, I discovered that I'm great with children. I should be a father one day. With that being said, you can probably guess what my strategy for the Brotherhood was as well. Well, if the boomers were a pain in the ass, then the Brotherhood was like having Edward Scissorhands for a proctologist. This room of a handful of goobers took me so many tries to kill. I tried so many different strategies. Full frontal assault? Bad idea. Stealth boy and hide? Limited results. Stealth boy and don't hide? They see me anyway. That's multiple targets at once? Better, but still dead. It turned out the solution was get lucky with crits. I told you better crits would come in handy. Once I get through the first room, the rest of the bunker isn't nearly as bad. But I am brought down to my last stealth boy as I sneak out of the bunker after I set it to self-destruct, wiping out the Brotherhood, and finishing off the factions. Why did I wipe out the Brotherhood? Mostly because I thought it would be more interesting than siding with them. That might have been right. Now we're in the end game. Our final challenge awaits us at Hoover Dam, as we're tasked with protecting President Kimball. Nothing matters more than this moment, and making sure I'm able to get this shot off. Six Semper Tyrannus, bitch! And with my final stealth boy, 
I'm home free and able to steal his suit. Oh yeah, I am the spy. With that done, I make my way to the El Dorado substation and assault the troopers there while dressed as their own dead president, using their own guns against them. I am a death knell to morale. I place my sapper on the substation, and there's only one thing left to do now. I stock up on as many supplies as I can from the vendors who don't shoot me on sight, and it's time for the battle of Hoover Dam. It's a tough fight, but with the power of backstabs, my ranger sequoia, and some stealthy disguises, I'm able to sneak my way over to the legates camp, but the only bullets I have left in my ranger sequoia are hollow points. I should have been more conservative with my ammo, but this is what I have to work with. I load the fuck up on drugs and start the fight with the legate. My first attempt is an admirable fight, but ultimately a doomed one. The mysterious Magnum just doesn't have the stopping power to do serious damage to Lanius, and his Praetorians overwhelm me while I try to get slashes in with my knife. It was a valiant effort, but I'll need a new approach. My second attempt. I use the Ranger Sequoia, shoot him twice in the head with vats, and he dies. Uh... This is with hollow point rounds, by the way. You know, the rounds that are supposed to be bad against enemies wearing armor? Well, anyway, he dies so fast that only two of his Praetorians spawn in, and that's it. That's the Legate fight. I will not complain about a gun that looks this much like the Festive Ambassador clearing house with a couple of headshots. I then confront General Oliver, and oh god, he's actually kind of a threat when I'm only wearing a suit. Okay, I use Turbo to run away from General Oliver before his rangers can kill me, let the Securitrons deal with him, and talk to Yes Man, finishing the game. So can you beat Fallout New Vegas as the spy from Team Fortress 2? Yes. But god are you gonna have to be better at the game than me to do it efficiently. I guess that's kinda still the story with me and Spy. I'm just not all that good at him. But I was just good enough to beat the game with him with this challenge. So that counts for something. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want to see me beat New Vegas, Fallout 3, or Fallout 4 as any of the other mercenaries. And I'll see you guys next time. Sure. I'm not sure about that. Here to draw water, but here, you should have what I got. You look thirsty. I. Something tells me you would have been just fine. <laughs>